Today we're going to be working on a Pi game script. That's a uh, little game uh, module for Python. And um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you basically how to draw a simple line and then maybe do something a little more fun with it. So right here we have what I consider my base Python Pi game script. I did a tutorial on this. Almost every uh, Pi game script is going to start with this, so I figured I'd make this as a base script so I don't have to go over it every single time. There's a link in the description to this script and the video explaining it. So go ahead and check those out if you have not yet. So here we are with the base script. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here and um, we have our display update up here. That's fine. But let's actually move it down and put it in here into our while loop. Actually not 100% sure why I put that up there in the base script, but I already made the video. So that's what we're going with. So now... Uh, basically, with this, and I'll save it and show it to you real quick. We'll make this uh, script executable. I call it line.py. Oops. So change mod plus x line.py or whatever you name your script. Going to run it. It opens up a Pi game window. Uh, it doesn't really do anything uh, except for if you hit the x or press escape on your keyboard, it will close the application. That is what we have so far. So let's add in basically just one little uh, Pi game command here. And it's going to be pygame dot draw because we're going to be drawing something line, and then we're going to draw it. Where we're going to draw it? We're going to draw it on screen, which is our display that we created up here. So next, uh, after this comma, it's going to ask for basically the color, which is an RGB, which is red, green, and blue. Uh, the values can be anywhere from zero to two fifty five. The higher the number, the more of that color there is in there. So I'm just going to, for right now, put. Uh, 100 for each of them, which will probably give us kind of a gray color because it's a mixture of all colors, but not at full strength. Um, next, we're going to have to give it two points um, with two coordinates each, an X and Y. So the first one is where the line is going to start. And that's going to put 0, comma, 0. That's X and Y. So that's the top left corner of our Pi game screen. So we've gone over 0 and down 0, so top left corner. Then we're going to do comma, and inside some other parentheses, we're going to put the ending point. And it's X and Y. So we'll start off, we'll say uh, 100 and 300 for this. And then we'll close our outer parentheses there. So now we've created a little script that is going to draw a line in the window. So here we go, we'll start it up. And right there, you can see we have a line going from the top left corner, which is 0, 0. It's going over 100 pixels and down 200 pixels. And it is kind of a gray color because we have pretty much RGB all red, green, and blue all mixed in together, not at full strength. Let's uh, change it up a little bit. First off, let's uh, change the coordinates. So it's only go over 100. Let's make it so it goes over way further. Let's say 500 pixels. And we'll also change the color. Let's get rid of... Uh, the blue and the green, and we'll set red to 255. So this line is going to be a 100% red color. We'll save that script. We'll run it. And there you go. Now you can see it's going over 500 and down 200, and it is a full red color. So let's uh, have a little more fun with this. Well, let me, let me show you one more time. I've gone over RGB. I'm assuming you already understand RGB somewhat. But since we have 100% red there, let's add a 100% blue. And when you mix blue and red, what do you get? Purple, or kind of a pink purple. So, uh, so you can obviously see how you can mix colors like that. Let's make a pattern by drawing multiple lines over and over again at different points. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to start off by adding some new variables. So let's come up here outside of our while loop and we'll create a variable called x. We'll set that to 0. And a variable called y and we'll set that to 400. Um, then let's create variables for our RGB, our color. So we'll set r and we'll say it equals 255. Uh, g for green and we'll set that to 0. And we'll set b equal to 0 as well. So we're going to start this off, at least when our script starts off, the, the line will be 100% red if we put the variable r here, the variable g here, 
and the variable b here. Um, next, let's come down here and start messing with those um, variables within our while loop. We'll do them pretty much at the top here, right after our clock tick, which prevents our script from running too fast if you have an extremely fast processor. So we're going to say if x is greater than 400, or sorry, 4,000, what are we going to do? Well, actually, let's create another variable here. We'll put it up here. We'll call it x1, and I'll explain this in a moment. And we're going to set that value to 1. And what we'll do is we will now, anytime that x is greater than 4,000, we're going to set x equal negative 1. And then we're going to say if x is less than 0, we're going to set x1 equal to 1. And basically what I'm doing here is we're going to, um, well, let me do one more part here and I'll explain it a little bit clearer than what I was about to explain. We're going to say x plus equals x1. So basically x is going to start off as 0 as we set up here. And our loop is going to add whatever x1 equals, which in this case is 1. Now x is going to be the x ending point for our line. So it's going to continue growing by 1. So it's going to start at 0. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it's going to continue going really fast, about 60 times a second, until it hits 4,000. Once it hits 4,000, we're resetting x1 to negative 1. And that way, we'll now start subtracting x. And we'll be at 4,000. We'll go 3,999, 3,998. All the way down, we'll be doing that really fast until it gets to zero. Once it gets below zero, we're going to set x1 equal to one again, and it'll start going back again. So our line's going to be going back and forth on the x-axis there. Now, while we're doing that, uh, let's come down here. We are going to have our line always start at zero, zero. So it's always going to start in the top left corner. But what we're going to do in this case down here for the coordinates, we're going to say um, x, and we'll set our variable here for y. And as we, as you see, x is constantly going to be changing. Right now, I don't think we're going to do anything with y, but it doesn't hurt to have it as a variable in case you want to change it later on. Um, so OK, so we've got that. Let's see. Uh, I think we have everything for a working script now, although we're going to add more to it. So we're going to save that. We're going to run the script, and of course it started off your screen here, but it started as a black screen, and now our line is growing and growing and growing. Now, since we never black out the screen, which is something we normally do uh, in most games where each time the loop goes around, it resets to black. So each time it draws the line, the line stays there. I hope that makes sense. So we drew a thin line here, then a thin line here, then a thin line here, then a thin line here. And the reason it's moving along is because x is getting higher and higher. And once it reaches 4,000, it will start going the other way. Now, at the same time, normally, uh, we would want to have our little clock tick function here if we're running an actual game. But since this is more of just a pattern, it's fine if it goes at the top speed of your processor. So I'm actually going to, for now, I could delete it, but I'm just going to comment out these clock tags. That should speed up the movement of our line. There we go. So you can see our line moving and moving and moving. This is, once again, a very thin line, but being drawn over and over again next to itself. And once it gets to about 4,000 on the X, it should flip around. But let's start adding more to this. And what we'll do is we'll add a few more if statements here. So we're going to say here, it's going to say if R which is our red, green, and blue, is greater than 200, then, and just like the x, I'm going to create some variables up here. I'm going to create r1, g1, and b1. And we're going to set each one of those equal to 1. Because with RGB, the max that each color can be is 255. If you go higher than that, you're going to get an error. But we're actually not even going to go to full strength on any of them. We're only going to go to 200. 
and then we're going to turn around. So what we're just going to say here, just like the X statement, but this time we're working with colors instead of coordinates, but everything's numbers. We're going to say R equals, I'm sorry, R1 equals negative 1. Then I'm going to say L if R is, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, R is less than 50. That'd be good if I type things right. We're going to say R1 equals 1. So basically that would get the colors going back and forth. And we're going to do the same thing for red, green, and blue. And although people consider it bad practice, just to save time here, I am going to copy and paste that and quickly change each one of these because I'm limited on YouTube to 15 minutes. I'm going to change green uh, and blue as well. Just save myself some typing time there. And then we'll just say R plus equals R1. So we're adding whatever R1 is to R. We're going to do the same thing for green. And for blue. Now, if we run our script once again, you'll see that it's changing colors. The colors are going uh, back and forth, uh, except for the fact I feel like I left something out. Oh, I know what I did different in when I was practicing this. So we got a nice little pattern of colors there, and it's actually coming back once it hits there. You can see the line going back and forth, but I want more color than that. So we're quickly going to change in here, whoops, change in our script, and we're almost done here. And once again, this is just to show you some fun things you can do with the line. For R, we did one, but for green, when it's going negative, let's just give it a different number. We're going to give it three, so it's going to jump by threes, and then on the other way, it's going to go by twos. This will give it a little bit more of a random, although it's not really random, um, set of colors. Now, if we run our script again, you can see we get a rainbow of colors. It goes up, and once x equals 4,000, because it starts going real slow right there, it's going to turn around and come back the other way, getting faster and faster. And you can see it's overwriting the colors that are there. So that's a fun little way to play with lines. I'll post this script in the link in the descriptions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.